Hello and welcome to Sports Week. I'm Afzal Sumra and coming up on today's show. AFC Tottenham thrashed by table topping Merth Town. Winchester City maintained promotion pursuit. Whilst Winchester City hot slot striker Warren Bentley speaks exclusively to Winnell. And the club fill us in about their plans to develop the Den plan. Yes, we're excited about the idea and the vision that we have. We'll be even more excited when it starts to uh, come to fruition. Walking football gathers pace in Hampshire. The sport has just grown massively. Um, we just can't believe it as a county. And an unbeaten season for the University of Winchester's invincible rugby team. Ecstatic. It's a huge achievement for the boys. It's a huge achievement for the committee. Just a couple of months ago, Totten were riding high, winning five in a row and in line for promotion. But since then, it's been a disastrous run of seven games without a win. Elliot Buckley takes a look at a season of highs and lows for the Stags. Back in January, AFC Totten won five games in a row as they looked to make a serious charge for the playoff places. However, seven games without a win since January 24th has put to bed any promotion hopes that they may have had. With the club languishing in mid-table, Totten manager Steve Riley says promotion was too big an expectation. I said after, after the five victories in January, I said the next five matches will tell where we are as a club and we're, we're sort of in the mid-table area and um, I think people were sort of maybe got a bit carried away when we won five on the bounce, think we're going to be in the playoffs. And it didn't get any better for Totten as they hosted top of the table, Merthyr Town. The Stags went 1-0 down after Ian Trader's effort from around 20 yards out took a slight deflection off the head of Ryan Prosser, wrong foot in the keeper. Prosser's goal certainly leaving the away fans delighted. Merthyr doubled their lead through Prosser's own hard work, cutting inside after a storming run before shooting low into the bottom corner of the goal, leaving the home side with a lot of work to do. A few minutes before half-time, Prosser continued his impressive performance with an assist for Kane McLaggan, who could hardly miss from eight yards out, a goal which made Totten's comeback a near impossible task. In the second half, the Stags did give themselves a glimmer of hope when Liam Gilbert whipped a free kick into the box and Ellis White got the better of goalkeeper Tom Bradley to make it a slightly more respectable scoreline. The two-goal deficit was short-lived though, as Ian Trailer powered past Jamie Blackburn to fire a powerful shot beyond Patrick O'Flaherty. The away side then rubbed salt into the Totten's wounds when a long ball over the top was met with a mixture of poor defending and a great sense of urgency by Corey Jenkins to lob the ball over O'Flaherty and end a very disappointing afternoon for AFC Totten. It's now five losses in a row for AFC Totten with their last four coming against the division's top four sides. Elliot Buckley, Winchester News Online. There was better luck for Winchester City as they continued to pile the pressure on Wessex Premier League leaders Petersfield Town with a 2-0 victory over Verwood Town. And last night Paul Masters' side made it six straight wins as they still hold a realistic chance of promotion to the Southern Division 1 South and West. Mark Betts watched the action at the Denplan City ground. With Winchester in fine form, there was some surprise when Verwood started brightly. Tom Whalen firing just wide in the first 10 minutes and Jordan Fisk's wonder strike rattling the underside of the crossbar leaving Winchester stunned. In form frontman Warren Bentley was able to set up Chris Mason forcing Chris Lynch to make the save. A woeful clearance allowed Warren Bentley to beautifully finish past Lynch. Putting Winchester 1-0 up and Warren Bentley claiming his 46th goal of the season. A Chris Mason corner was met with a scramble in the box. Bentley hitting the post before unlikely goal scorer Jamie Thorogood was able to tap in Winchester's second. Ending the game 2-0 and moving Winchester just four points off leaders Petersfield and just three points behind Moneyfields. Mark Betts, Winchester News Online. Warren Bentley was once again on the score sheet in that game in what is turning out to be a stellar season for the striker. Ross Perkins was able to catch up with Bentley to get an exclusive interview with the prolific forward. It's not easy to score a goal. 
from the park to the professional pitch. But Winchester City's Warren Bentley doesn't have that problem, having scored 46 goals in all competitions so far this season. It's a familiar sight to Winchester City fans seeing Bentley score goals week in, week out. The number 10 is clearly playing at the top of his game, but how does he do it? According to the man himself, his teammates give him a bit of a helping hand. Well, it helps with the team I'm playing in. Uh, we get loads of attacking op options throughout the game, chances galore really. I should have scored a lot more to be honest. We have a, a lot of decent players in the side, so I'm not, not just the only man teams are picking up, but um, obviously you do get a bit more attention as a striker from the defenders, but you just have to deal with it, I'm used to it now. Bensley re-signed for City at the beginning of the season from Orsford Town after initially struggling to make an impact to the club as a youngster. But last season, he scored a career-best 58 goals, which means in just two seasons, he has scored over 100 goals in all competitions. Talk about making an impact now. It's obviously the best feeling when you're playing football. Um, and nothing like scoring in front of a packed out den plan on Friday night. It's something I do in my spare time outside of work that I, I want to do. It's uh, a pastime that I've always enjoyed since I was young. Warren Bensley is clearly a talented individual, but how much of that is down to confidence and self-belief? I've sought out an expert to answer that question. So, I mean, fundamentally, um, sports performance is, is about psychology. So you can have. And at the elite level, they talk about the fact that you can physically and technically and tactically get to a similar level. But obviously the thing that differentiates whether you're successful or not is the stuff that's going on in your head. It's one of the reasons why less talented individuals can beat more talented individuals. So it's obviously very effective at putting the ball in the back of the net. So he must have the skills. But also it comes down to confidence. He's obviously very confident because he's been performing well, but there must be other sources of confidence for him as well. So knowing he's prepared, well done, the same things that he usually does. People telling him that he's improving as a player, that's important. So there must be a range of factors which are contributing to him going out on a Saturday or a Wednesday or whenever they're playing and walking out on that pitch thinking, how many goals am I going to score rather than if I'm going to score? I would like to play higher, there's no secret about that and we, we've had that discussion, I'm sure most of the team would like to play higher. And we've played against a few Conference South sides this year and the, the, the club's done itself no harm in any of those games. I think I've done well and proven to myself more than anyone that I can play at that standard. It's whether the club can progress at the same rate as, as, as myself and I think it can match my ambition. Bensley is a full-time PE teacher, a job which he loves, but not as much as his love for football. Both are uh, something I really enjoy. Um, teaching, there's nothing better than teaching a good lesson and the kids really enjoying what you're, what you're teaching them and what they're learning. But obviously I'd rather score a last minute winner on a, on a Saturday with, with the team. So what does the future hold for Warren Bentley? And can he break into football at a reasonably high level? I'm not sure. I don't really like to set myself any long-term targets. Um, what I learned from last summer is just to take, take each decision as it comes, really. And that decision is not made at the moment, and I don't really like to make that decision during the season. Probably the standard I, was, I would be able to get at, if it was professional standard, would be at low echelons. Um, which would obviously be absolutely great. I mean, everyone dreams of being a professional footballer when they're younger. But I um, also, also have uh, ambitions with, with my work and being able to fit work and football together can sometimes be a better balance. But you never know. I mean, like I said, it's something, something every, every kid dreams of when they're younger. So you never know. Warren Bentley loves playing for Winchester City but his ability and prolificness in front of goal wouldn't look out of place in a higher conference league or maybe even the football league. If he keeps up his current form and impressive goal scoring tally, that break into a high level of football may not be so far away. Ross Perkins, Winchester News Online. Staying with Winchester City, the club is looking to redevelop its home ground with the inclusion of an all new stand, all weather pitch and new training area. Rachel Gunter has more on this story. Winchester City have been flying high in the Wessex Premier League recently and the next step for the club is some major redevelopment. 
Those running the club would like to see a new stand, an all-weather pitch and a new training area with a current ballpark cost figure of £1.5 million. Pounds. We're excited about the idea and the vision that we have. We'll be even more excited when it starts to uh, come to fruition. Obviously, in any negotiations, uh, take a long time to get the uh, project up and running, and we're in that period now. But uh, when, it, when it starts to happen, we'll be very, very, very excited. We're already a club that people covet to come to at this level, and I think that you know it would attract players because of the facilities. Uh, we'd perhaps be able to sort of further our academy into older players to play uh, um, at a decent level, and I think it would help us uh, in every single respect. However, the club are aware they face tough competition with other development projects in Winchester, such as Silver Hill and the River Park Leisure Centre. Yeah, the, the local council have been supportive. They've had many other things um, uh, preoccupying them, and, and uh, we're obviously not at the uh, the top of their list, and that we fully understand that. They've got the issues with Silver Hill development and the River Park, both major, major issues that are not running as smooth as they would like, uh, to say the least. We seem to have been pushed into the background um, and we're hoping for a little bit of movement you know, fairly soon before we get a bit frustrated. The plans would see the capacity increased up to 3,000. Winchester City already has the highest average attendance in the league with around 170 fans attending home games. Their game against Moneyfields two weeks ago saw 462 fans attend and Paul Murray believes that this proves there is a place for Friday night football in the non-league. It doesn't clash with uh, the league programme and uh, Friday night is a good night for people to go out and so Friday night football is good and, and, and for non-league football I think uh, we should concentrate on it more, especially at a fiver. The club hope that redevelopment can happen as early as May of 2017. Rachel Gunter, Winchester News Online, Winchester. On Sunday, the Hampshire FA hosted its first ever walking football festival at Eastleigh Silver Lake Stadium. The Legends Cup, which comprised of several walking football clubs across the south, was launched with much fanfare and Dominic Chandler went to Eastleigh to find out more about it. Last weekend, Eastleigh FC Silver Lake Stadium hosted the Hampshire FA's Walking Football Legends Cup. The Hampshire FA have become the leaders in the development of the sport in a scheme designed specifically for men and women aged 50 and over. Yeah, it's taking off, but for us that's fantastic because as development staff also working for Hampshire FA, we need to be seeing are there any gaps in provision that we can support and walking football has come in completely inclusive, giving these players another chance to get back involved in the game and we have just seen it grow. So there is still an interest in other areas. We need to take that on board. We are constantly taking that on board. We are constantly trying to do things as much as possible to get things up and running for these players. And as you can see, the success has already been there with 20 plus clubs. So we are very, very pleased, but now we continue to develop. With no running, little contact and kickings as opposed to throw-ins, walking football ensures that there is minimal stress on the player's body but it still maintains that competitive edge and the need for tactical awareness. Um, it gives me the chance to play football again, you know, um, in a competitive nature, but again with a social aspect as well. Uh, obviously, at our age, trying to play against nippers is not on. Um, too many injuries, that sort of thing. But here, we're all about the same age, roughly, and you can use your skills have a few shots and have a good laugh at the same time. It's really good. It's exactly the same as it was yeah, you 30 years ago for us. You it's, still, it's still get the same thrills when you score a yeah. goal. You're still competitive. Um, you do a flick, you do a turn, don't you? And it's the, the only difference is you're playing against probably guys you may have met in local football. Um, it can still be not as physical, but there's still that competition in it that you, you, know, you still want to perform. And reactions are slower, so sometimes you know a kick goes in. It's not intentional. Um, it, it's just a great social thing, and what a wonderful, crazy idea to get this off the road uh, for the over 50s. The sport has just grown massively. Um, we just can't believe it as a county what we've seen so far. It's just in absolutely incredible. I think this will be the biggest variation of football that we have yet to see, and I think it will make some pretty big strides across the country. In the space of just a year. Walking football across Hampshire has gone from having absolutely no clubs to 20 clubs, 30 teams and over 300 players, 200 of which are here today. 
It's certainly a sport that has benefited from learning to walk before it can run. Dominic Chandler, Winchester News Online, Eastley. And finally, the University of Winchester's men's rugby union first team has gone an entire season unbeaten with eight wins out of eight. With a staggering goal difference of 339, the university team has certainly kicked their opponents into touch. And I'm delighted to say that Captain Connor Mitchell joins us now in the studio. Firstly, Connor, congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel about the team getting promoted? Ecstatic. It's a huge achievement for the boys. It's a huge achievement for the committee, for myself, Vice Captain Chairman. Something that we've worked towards for, for many years. And it's a, it's a huge feeling to finally finish my final university year with such a great win. So what does it mean to the team to achieve this feat? Hopefully now it puts us on the map. Being quite a small university, sports teams don't necessarily get the emphasis that they deserve. But now hopefully going forward we can get some, some proper support. Yeah, so is this the biggest thing to happen to rugby for the University of Winchester? I think it is, yeah. I mean, to finally finish on a year where we've got a 100% win record, opens eyes, it means that hopefully now we can go forward as a, as a stronger team. Yeah, so what's next for the, you and the team? What's the future hold? I'm hoping that we can go forward and win the next league. I mean, we've walked this league and, and hopefully we can do the same to the next and just keep moving up, keep moving up. Thank you, Connor, for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. And that's all from Sports Week. But for more award-winning news, sport and features, head over to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.